Uh, another in progress shot here guys. So I've got almost everything torn out. Although I am actually going to take the case apart all the way um, all the way down to the drive cages here, the mid plate, uh, these back pieces. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this before, but when I originally got the internals of my case powder coated, you can see here this is a Mountain Mods black wrinkle finish. Uh, when I originally got that done, I forgot to send Ben from Mountain Mods this piece, this piece, and this one. So they've always still been the original silver uh, aluminum color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find a local shop with a chemical bath, strip down the powder coating off of my old parts, including my motherboard tray here as well, and then I'm going to send him all the old parts stripped down, the parts that have never been done, I'm going to strip the powder, the factory powder coating off these uh, Antec 900 drive cages and I'll send those down as well so that they will at least, if they don't match this finish, they'll at least match the interior finish because otherwise I don't really know what else to do with that. You can see there's a lot of gunk in here that I'm going to have to clean off before I can even get the paint stripped off. These are, this is residue left behind from the uh, cathode lights mounting. So there's some up here as well. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. Ooh, something up there. Whoops, I forgot about those. Uh, there you go, now you can see it. So there's lots of tapes and junk that's going to take me a while to clean out. Got to get these fans out of here. I think I'm going to stick with the Gelid wings. I like them for a couple reasons. They undervolt really well, plus the blades come right off, so it means you can clean them out really easily and then uh, just pop them back in there. So that's awesome. Plus, it's one of the few high-quality fans that comes in 120 mil. 92 mil um, and whatever other sizes you need. I'm going to stick with air penetrators for the radiator in the bottom as well. I don't see the point of uh, spending money on fans if I already have good high quality ones that I can just clean up. Now reservoir, this is something that's a bit tricky. This is my, this is my most current one. So this is my problem with the MC Res Micro. It always gunks up because no loop is 100% clean and uh, to, you know, lesser or greater extent, this one's epic. So it's pretty, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty disgusting. And it's impossible to clean. Um, so I'm either going to go with a fresh MC Res Micro. So here's a new one. This is a Red 2. So it's got the, uh, the fill port in the bottom, I think. Yeah, so it has the fill port in the bottom. All those are Rev 1s. Um, so I'm either going to do that or I'm going to go with uh, the XSPC Acrylic Tank Reservoir for the Lang D5. Because I don't have a ton of space. In the basement down here, once I put in that thick um, 480mm radiator and the power supply, I'm left with just a tiny bit of space here for cable routing and, uh, and for the pump and reservoir. So I might go that route. Remember, the fittings for the radiator come out over here as well, so it's very cramped in there. Um, and since tidying up the cabling is one of the goals for this build, I'm going to have to figure out a smarter way to do that. So... The reservoir top goes on instead of this piece right here, you just screw the pump unit into it and then it acts as both a pump top to theoretically improve performance, so I don't really care about that, as well as a reservoir. So that's uh, probably the route we're going to go for that. One of the other things I'm sort of <clears throat> considering, since I'm going to have to go to probably a plating shop anyway to get these, uh, to get these stripped, is maybe plating the copper heads because right now there's no way I'd consider using these in the build just because the color scheme is just, I mean, terrible. You can't have silver, remember this is like a true silver color, silver, gold, and copper in the same build. That simply will not fly. But I do have two of these, so I could potentially do uh, one on each side of the memory in order to, I mean, it's going to be really busy tubing wise though. So yeah, I still got to think about that, whether or not I want to water cool the RAM. I know there's no performance benefit. Don't worry guys. I know this isn't even real copperhead memory. This is just a, this is just cheap memory with, uh, with the copperhead heat spreader. Look, it's just DDR3, uh, 1600 CL9. <laughs> like there's nothing special about it, but I just wanted the copperhead, uh, sink so that I focus, focus. Copperhead sinks so that I could do uh, so I could show them off in the ultimate water cooling guide. So uh, that was my whole motivation there. Uh, what are other things that I that I want to sort of talk about? I can show you guys more about the machine. You can see how disgusting it gets with all the like cat hair and like look at that. I can't even I can't even scrape this off. I might even have to like pressure wash this thing. I'm not really sure how I'm going to get it clean. I thought about painting the case itself, but I love the finish of the Silverstone TJ07. 
Um, so I, yeah, I think I'd be doing a disservice to this particular case by by painting and it's really not in that bad shape. This is a very durable finish that's on this particular case, especially on here. The side panels are not in nearly as good condition, but uh, painting is, is an expenditure, once again, that I don't really need. And with, uh, you know, rotten creatures like that one over there, uh, it's, yeah, likely to get scratched and all that. So, uh, one other small problem I have is that my motherboard tray one of the, you can see that the one right in the center of the frame, that hole is actually bigger than the other two. One of those is stripped. So I've thought about whether or not I want to bother trying to get a new one from Silverstone or something like that. I, I don't know what to do about that. I mean, I could retap them all a different size and use like custom screws in order to hold in all my adding cards. But once again, it's kind of like, do I want to go through the hassle? Because the thing that's going to be installed in there is going to be the graphics card, which is going to have two screws in it anyhow, so I'm not really that concerned about it. Um, oh yeah, the last thing I'm probably going to powder coat is the housing for this. So since I'm sending it down to, uh, to Mountain Mods, I might as well have them deal with that as well. And then I think that's it for, for metal stuff. I'm going to stick with my, uh, my shiny, um, shiny PCI slot covers. I really like the look of these. Um, you know, goes with stuff like this, sort of. You can't really tell, but this is also very mirror finish. It's just dusty. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so uh, moving on to the next thing. Oh yeah, along the uh, same note of the gunk that's built up and that uh, that GTX 480 block that um, caused my whole loop to go all cloudy and murky. I mean, this is the state of the tubing that uh, that was in my that was in my loop at the time i'm gonna have to do something about my radiators because i'm not gonna replace them because that's hold on i'm just gonna turn off the auto white balance or rather turn it on uh just okay so we're in the bathroom here so yeah once again it's an expenditure i don't really need and uh you can't even you can't even really get a better radiator than the one i'm already using anyway the thermochill one so what is the point? I might as well do what I can in order to salvage it, right? Um, you know what? I lost the tubing I was going to use. Give me a sec, guys. So this is not the best way to cleanse radiators. So I got my thermal chill, one uh, to a four by one twenty mil, and I've got this is this is awesome. This is my um, Hardware Labs Black Ice Pro Two. This is the first radiator I ever bought. It's in horrible shape. All of these threads are stripped to hell. But uh, I hold on to it just because, you know, it's, my one of, it's one of the few things I have left. Although I still have my Apogee, my original Swiftech Apogee, which was also in my first water cooling, like custom water cooling loop. Um, so yeah, I continue to use it because you can't really see it anyway. So yeah, uh, here. You can actually see, I don't know if you guys can see that, you see all the gunk in the water there? You can see like dust and particulate matter um, that's obviously part of the water cooling now that it's uh, got all those metal corrosion bits floating around in it. So to cleanse these, if I was a purist, I would probably be using some kind of like filtration system or something like that. But what I'm going to do, since I'm just going to ghetto it, is um, just run water. I might do hot water at first and then switch over to cold water and run it all night. But I'm just going to hook these two radiators up. I'm going to take this piece of tubing and I'm going to tape it into the faucet. Yeah, how's that for a product placement right there? Got that taped on there and then I'm just going to run the water for a little bit here. I know this is not the best way to do this just because of a couple things. So one is the, uh, the metal ions that can exist in tap water. So yeah, that's going to leave a bit of a deposit here, but I think the net result is still going to be better than what I had going on in there before. Uh, it's a bit of a waste of water as well. The good news is I live in British Columbia, Canada, where water costs almost nothing. My cat's very curious about what the heck's going on in his sink. This is sort of the cat bathroom, because they have their food and their water in there. Um, so yeah, there, I think that's pretty much the update for now, cleaning up my water cooling stuff. And uh, still some decisions to be made. Got to send away some parts, so it might be a little while before I have another update. But I will keep you guys posted. Don't forget to subscribe.